Liam Eckert, Major of the USMC Special Ops Unit Lamora reporting in. The mountains are cold and quiet. Besides myself, there's only three remaining in my squad. If the past few hours are any indication, well, we'll all be dead by sunrise. The thing, ungodly vile beyond comprehension, is still out there in the forest beyond. You found shelter in a cave, the damp space providing a safety for a little while, but it could easily be right outside our doorstep, and we wouldn't even have a chance to scream. In the event we perish, I leave behind the record of what we found here. Hopeful that the creature will only kill us. Well, what the good these notes will do, I can't say. Except to remind us all that the world we think we understand is non existent. October 22nd. My squad consists of eight other seasoned Marine officers that I have served alongside for nearly 13 years. Our commanding officer, Jack Taggett, gave us the mission docket at approximately 2,300 hours. While I can't include the exact details of the report here, I can summarize to let you know that we were ordered to eliminate a threat that's been identified near the Yosemite National Park. Judging from the initial briefing, many of us had a look of confusion on our faces when we were told to hunt and track down a creature that, by all accounts, should not exist. Most of us assumed this had been some kind of training exercise or that it was merely a secret mission and the orders that we were given were false. All my years, I never expected that we would be going in search of Bigfoot, Lieutenant Bosch said with a hearty laugh. There are a few in our group that have taken our instructions to the letter, though, and studied what little they can to find out about the creature that we were supposed to be hunting. At the time, I was sure the information we had obtained from the second-hand web searches and strange drawings but merely the stuff of folktale. After everything I'd seen and heard, I can't be sure any longer which of the documents we found are true and which are false. The data we obtained told us the creature is approximately 39 to 42 feet tall, with some cited to be as large as 53 feet. But that alone seemed to make it impossible for it to hide in the woods unseen. No creature on Earth had that type of camouflage. Now, other details included that the creature was able to mimic any kind of sound, including voices, which supposedly it used to lure people to their doom, hence the name, but I, I couldn't wrap my head around why anyone would be fooled to follow such a noise into the unknown. And how could such a lanky creature even feed on flesh? The drawings resembled something like a rusted, dried-up gibbon, with no feasible way to consume except for a thin mouth near the top of its twin heads in some... In some ways, it resembled the roots of a tree, you know, winding in and out of the body to create a conglomeration of mangled wires. But none of it, none of it seemed real to me. Even after we arrived, we were given details about its hunting territory. I still denied this was why we were really here. Surely, there was some other reason than to track such a ridiculous-sounding monster. October 27th, we set up base camp near the foot of the mountains. Three soldiers were told to start reconnaissance of the surrounding area and take photographs of everything. As Taggett explained, the creature could easily hide amid the forest by looking like any other large tree. I decided that evening to entertain the notion that this beast was in fact real, and existed in the shadowy, quiet woods that surrounded us. So I asked how it was that this creature had come into the interests of the United States Army. Taggart put out his cigarette, looked out wistfully towards the stars. Well, about two years ago or so, there was a survey going on over in Afghanistan near the Chinese border. Whole battalion wiped out. No one knew what happened for nearly three months. Most of the reports had written it off as some kind of terrorist attack, but then one, one of the team members, they managed to come back alive. Uh, Hendrix, uh, Henderson, uh, I can't remember. But he starts rambling on and on about how this bizarre creature had found them in the desert. Taggart seemed to pause as though he had heard something off in the distance. He told us that we should set up camp a little further into the mountain trail just to be safe. When we all arrive, 
When we all asked why, he claimed it to be too quiet where we were. A few hours later, once we had settled down, Bosch noted the team we'd sent out earlier still hadn't returned yet. Tiger took that as a sign that we were already in the creature's territory. He ordered Bosch and I to unload the heavy sound system he brought with us and explained, When the creature's sleeping, it blasts white noise. Soft harmonic music that anyone can mistake is just nature's creatures buzzing about the night. It also keeps the creatures from invading each other's territory. From what I understand, they're very solitary monsters, our CEO explained. The rest of us still didn't know what to make out about all of this, but obediently complied. The remainder of the night was just as unnerving, as Taggart refused to sleep and kept adjusting the frequency of his radio. I might pick him up, he explained softly. October 30th, nearly all Hallow's Eve. No more appropriate time to be hunting monsters, I suppose. We haven't heard back from the first recon team, and while Taggart seems to believe the monster took him, most of us think they simply bailed. As some of the teams begin to question the CEO's sanity for coming here now that we've confirmed that he is interested in these ungodly creatures, I mean, I too wonder where this all is going to lead. 3.30 a.m. Witching hour. Some say. I hear Taggart attempting to whistle towards the woods as a storm is blowing in. It's sad to see that he's come so far from the man that I respected. But a moment later, after he makes the noise, something out in the brush whistles back. He freezes as a crackle of lightning splits the sky and we begin to hear what sounds like a reverberating quake across the entire forest. Then a low droning sound sounds across the wood like an actual storm siren used for tornadoes. What the hell is that? Officer West shouted as he stumbled awake and Taggart signaled all of us to remain still. We watched the canopy to see if anything was moving amid the trees. But all we heard was those wrenching noises of massive oaks being pushed over along with that same droning noise. Eventually it faded away into the night. And Taggart told us it was time to go collect evidence. This time... This time we all followed without question. There were approximately seven downed trees that we found 45 meters east of camp. Large redwood that could not have possibly been shoved down by anything except some massive, aggressive force. Our CO made sure to remind us that we needed to have our weapons drawn and ready for anything. The air was unusually still. Then I looked down to the ground and saw massive claw marks the size of tire tracks. It reminded me of the way bears would mark their territory. I sent a chill up my spine. That feeling of unease only grew when immediately we heard the strange noise being echoed around us. Suddenly, all of us were aiming at the tree line as the voices echoed loud. Previous. Square. Dogs. Link. Father. Each voice sounded almost human. Nonsensical ramblings that were designed to confuse and disorientate. We heard the crashing of trees around us, and then I turned and saw the unspeakable. Long, bony fingers that seemed to come from the tops of the trees, reaching down and grabbing Taggart like a ragdoll, hoisting him up as more gibberish spelled out. Closed. Shiny. Month. Determined. Enchanted. I heard Taggart scream and order us to fire, but none of us, none of us knew where to aim amid the trees. A moment later, his scream stopped. And then from the canopy, his body fell with a resounding thud. Broken in two by the giant that had ripped his head off with one single bite. Fall back! Fall back! I ordered the others as the blasting siren noise now deafened the woods and I saw a massive foot lift up to walk towards us. Bosch and two other soldiers did not listen to the warning and tried to fire into the beast. It sounded like the bullets were hitting something like a metallic plate and not penetrating to do any damage and then the forest only had the sound of the creature's confusing, garbled noise. As those soldiers suffered the same fate as our CO. November 3rd. There are only five of us left. We've taken to the old fire trails that were used by rangers to radio for assistance. 
To be honest, not many of us know what we're supposed to do. Anytime we have considered leaving, the creature sends out another mighty roar of noise. Some of it even sounds like people we know. Taggart. Bosh. It's constantly on the move. Amid our limited supplies, we discovered more reports from Homeland Security that detail the... the purpose of this mission. To not only to track and monitor the monster, but to attempt to determine how it operates so that our own military can mimic it on the battlefield. According to Senior Officer Harold Garand, one of the main tasks was to find a weakness for the beast and... But perhaps what was the most disturbing out of the entire report was what the concluding sentence had to say. Should the Delta team prove to be unsuccessful, five more units are standing by to attempt to capture the beast. I couldn't fathom more men coming here and losing their lives the way that Taggart has. My only prayer is that is that we're able to survive long enough to warn others to stay away. November 7th. We haven't heard the creature for several days now. We decided to attempt to escape the nightmare. We, we found an old map discarded by some unfortunate camper here and we're gonna use it to find a radio tower. God be with us that we can find it there without incident. Halfway to the tower, we heard the distinctive slow white noise of the creature echoing around the area. At first, the melody would have been something that could put us at ease, but given what we know now, not a soul dared to take another step. I raised my weapon and moved up the trail, looking about at the different massive tangled roots and wishing I could determine which one might be hiding the malevolent tree got. The other men followed me cautiously as we arrived at the tower, hastily climbing the steps to signal to our home base that we needed rescue. Opening the door to the dusty watchtower, I got the strange sense of being watched as I stepped into the shadowy room. It was clear that the place had not been operated in in quite some time, and that any equipment we hoped to use had now fallen into disrepair. There's a first aid kit, a few flare guns. Nothing major, though. Wes reported as he turned to me for orders. With Taggart gone, I, I was opted as leader, and the responsibilities didn't feel as great as I had hoped. Given what we were up against, I knew that one word wrong could send us to our deaths. I think I opened my mouth to order them to gather what they could, but the words never came out. Instead, that white noise shifted suddenly to a blasting, intense, shrill pitch that made us all fall to our knees in agony. The noise did not let up as I crawled over towards the balcony of the watchtower, using the massive spotlight that was attached to the side of the building to try and get a good look at the creature. I'll never forget the long strides it took as it gracefully sifted through the forest treating the tops of the trees as though they were grass to be brushed by. It was it was moving towards us at an alarming rate. I, sh I shouted as loud as I could to my squad to retreat, but already Wes and other officers were convulsing in shock due to the resounding alarm that the siren was giving. They, they were beyond recovery. I pushed my way down the stairs just as the mighty creature reached into the watchtower and took both men with its dry bony hand, raising them high into the night sky. As the garble turned to a soft, almost soothing music. Perhaps something to ease them into accepting the fate they were a part of. And then it dropped them towards his open mouth. The teeth gleamed in the moonlight as its massive, snake-like tongue whipped out and gobbled them up. The rest of us stood transfixed as it crunched their bones like we might chew on crackers, horrified at the idea that our fellow soldiers had fallen into the belly of the beast while still alive. Then just as suddenly as it had come, the creature stalked back into the forest, finding its way amid the taller of the trees and disappearing from sight. We should stay here. The man next to me said, trembling as rain began to fall. 
I saw no reason to object. Too dazed by the events of the day to even... To even consider making a run for it. November 8th. By mid-morning, we resolved to take the trail into the mountains and head for the nearest campsites. It seemed unlikely that the beast would follow us into a heavily populated area, but we had been wrong before. In the morning sun, I could almost make it out amongst the trees. Its long, bony legs and arms stuck together to further resemble a massive lumber as the wind shifted it from side to side, the air felt, it felt electric as I gave the order to leave. I wondered too as we marched on if it was all alone here in the forest. Most of Taggart's documents claimed that it was the last of its species, but sightings, sightings had been all around the world, so it seemed almost impossible. How could one creature have caused all these problems. But I never would doubt its ferocity, no. Not after seeing most of my friends die before my eyes. As we reached the mountains, we heard the creature wake up again, blasting more mindless noise as it started up the hunt. Would we be safe if we traveled further? Only time will tell. I didn't try to make any further notes as we traveled this harsh landscape. The creature seemed to be one step ahead of us the entire time, forcing us into these caverns, mimicking even, even our lost loved ones to torment us with the fact that we are now mice trapped in a maze. I don't know for sure what will happen when it finally zeroes in on our location. I only pray this document's found by someone who, who knows what to do with it, how to get it out there for others to be aware of the threat. Lieutenant Commander Eckert, signing out. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just want to make sure that all of you guys are still staying safe and doing your best to stay inside and keep yourself quarantined if you can do so. For those of you who can't, really appreciate you guys doing what you, you know, have to do. So, all the best to all of you who are still working, and all the best to all of you who are forced to kind of stay home and are not able to work. If you guys are missing out on a lot of the conventions, which at this point, all of them that I was planning on going to this year with the exception of San Japan, uh, looks like have been either cancelled or pushed back. If you guys were looking forward to any of the conventions this year and are missing out on a lot of the artwork from some of your favorite authors or artists, take a look in the description down below. At least until the quarantine is over, you'll be able to find links to a bunch of my artist friends as well as authors uh, in the description of every video. And of course, I will be bringing you guys stories every single day from now until the end of time, available here on YouTube as well as here on the podcast on Spotify, Apple, iTunes and Google and wherever else you can get podcasts. And now a very special thank you, big thank you, the biggest thank you I can possibly give to all of you who support on patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, who help keep the lights on in my house. Patreons such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chompinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, G. Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cowell, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Gabrielle Undefined, Barbie Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Dr. Strawberry, Barbara Masio, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, Let's Get Scared, S-Man, Brandy Hasanori, and King DDD. Thank you guys so much for supporting on Patreon, as well as all of you that are shown in the description down below. And sweet dreams, everyone. <laughs>